tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. After Buzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Yay, we're here. We're all, we're all back in the studio. Yes, we're so happy to have week. you back. Thank you. I'm very excited to be back. Hello, everyone. If you're tuning into AfterBuzzTV.com, you have come to the right place because this is the after show for The Amazing Race, Season 25, Episode 4, Thinly Sliced Anchovies. I'm your host, James Wallington, and with me are two of my favorite people. Hey, guys. I'm Jessica Carroll, and... Hi, everybody. I'm Justin Nichols. And we are really excited about tonight's episode. We kind of uh, talked a little bit before we went live, and yeah. there's just so much to cover. I feel like it was a little bit better than last week's. I finally mm -hmm. watched last week's episode today as well, did a little encore. <laughs> um, so let's just dive right in and head to Copenhagen. What let's do you guys do think? It. Let's do it, cool. yeah. All right, so we see teams, and they start off in the Shetland Islands. I love how they're working up in the tents. Like, how, what a cool experience uh -huh. that would be, just to wake up in a tent in the Shetland Islands. Do so you cool. you think they really slept in the tents? It looks I like do. they did. I think they but did. I was surprised by that. I don't know. Misty's hair looked pretty good. I, I, <laughs> yeah, it seems, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, it was cool nonetheless. Yeah, it was yes. cool. What, they'd like wake up super early and get shuttled back to the tents. Like, all right, get in, pretend like you're waking up. And like, <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what they made him do. <laughs> you never know. Those producers, they can twist it all That's they want. True. Side around your parade. Anyway, there's, really, there's really like a going. hotel like around the, around the little place. <laughs> so we see Jim and Misty leaving in first place. One of my teams on the fantasy Shock. team here. Uh -huh. They leave at 10.36 a.m. And then sh uh, about an hour later, Adam and Bethany at 11.45, followed by Keith and Whitney at 11.53. And then all the other teams, whatever. no one really cared because <laughs> they didn't ever show the times. Well, this is when we see Jim and Misty kind of revert back to talking about the save. Mm -hmm. And the moment I heard them talking about the save, I was like, hmm. This is probably going to be yeah. really relevant to this episode. Yeah. But I'm like, are they really going to get last place? So I don't no really know for sure. First to worst. Right? At least that's what Jim thinks. <laughs> so then we see all the team just kind of figuring out how they're going to take this 12 hour ferry. Can you imagine a 12 hour ferry? I mean, I would go a little insane. That's a long ferry. But it, it was a good equalizer because that's true. they all had to wait five hours until the ferry even took off. So it didn't really matter what time they left to begin with because they all ended up just waiting around. Right. But every episode, there's been a big equalizer. I, I know. Like. Every episode. Interesting. They they also were a little confused about what to do when they got off the ferry. They are like, we're either going to yeah. go to the airport or the travel agent. And this is actually when I was thinking, well, Brooke and Robbie are a little bit more smart at the game than I think they've been showing them. Because mm -hmm. they were like, we're just going to go straight to the airport because the travel agency doesn't open until 9 and right. we dock at 7 a.m. So why not go straight to the airport? You, of Agreed. course, the airport, airport's going to be open at 7 a.m. opposed to waiting yeah. around for two hours at the travel agency. Right. So do you think, because um, I know Jim and Misty went to the library uh, before the ferry, right? And yes. kind of looked up flights online. Which, mm -hmm. did you catch that the agent behind that table or whatever didn't tell the other teams to go to the library? Yeah. yeah. I, I kept rewinding it because I was like, did Jim and Missy tell her not to tell the other teams? But they, they didn't, didn't show, show it. show them asking her to say that. But it's probably one of those things too where I think when they agree to be on the show, mm -hmm. I think the producers also say, only give as much information as they're asking for. Just to be uh... fair. Because... <clears throat> Pardon me. You didn't hear other teams Good be point. like, is there a computer I can use? And so I'm sure that they're kind of told, hey, unless a team asks, don't, don't tell offer, them. Right. Yeah. That's part of the challenge of the race. That's a really good mm -hmm. point, Justin. But we saw that the teams were pretty split down the middle with yeah. who went to the agency and mm -hmm. who went to the airport. Mm -hmm. the, air the airport had Kim and Allie, Tim and TJ, Brooke and Robbie, and Keith and Whitney. Then the agency had Shelly and Nisi, Amy and Maya, Jim and Misty, and Adam and Bethany. Which, uh, now, after we kind of saw, saw how that whole situation played out, it didn't really matter which team went where, because some teams that went to the airport, like Tim and TJ, or Shell, uh, like Tim and TJ, they weren't till like, the last two teams to even leave. Yeah. 
um, the Shetland Islands. Right. So it was kind of hit or miss depending on what kind of flight you got. Mm -hmm. So uh, not only were Tim and TJ delayed, but also Shelly and Nisi who went to the travel agency. But let's talk about Broken Robbie really quick. Let's do it. About the whole handyman stuff. Do you remember that? Oh, how oh, I'm, don't park in the handyman spot. And he's like, it's handicap spot. And she's like, no, it's handyman. <laughs> hey, they're wrestlers. They get hit in the head a lot. <laughs> I just, just saying. Bless her heart. Handy, handyman. Bless her heart. Handy capable. <laughs> I, I thought that was very funny. I uh, think they're, they're definitely characters. But I think Brooke is more smarter than Robbie, for sure. I don't think Robbie is the brightest crayon in the box. Yeah, you know what? I I agree, but I think they also know their characters on the show. Yeah. And so I think it's one of those where if you're on the show and you're known as like the ditzy blonde or you're known as like kind of the meathead right. wrestlers, like I think they played up a little bit, but we saw in this episode they're not so dumb. I mean, they they played a really smart leg. They played a really smart leg, but, you know, there was a lot of memorization involved in this episode. Mm-hmm. And Robbie made it very clear. He's like, you know, I've, <coughs> I've been knocked in the head maybe a few too many times. Mm-hmm. So my, memoriza- like my memorizing skills might not be up to play. But they, so they are definitely playing off it. I yeah. agree with you, Justin. When teams land at the airport... They have to find, this is when we have our famous product placement every season for the four drinks. Yeah. Was it the Ford C-Max Energy Plug-In Hybrid? You just did it again, James. What? Don't feed in, don't don't feed into their, oh their my mind gosh. games. Just say Ford. Uh, just, uh. Seriously. <laughs> the product placement in this episode was out of control. I loved how even once they got to the cars, as they were driving, they were like, oh, it's so smooth. Like, I love I cars love this that car. save energy. I was like, okay. Uh, but this was a kind of different, this is actually kind of a challenge in itself for it. once, which I, I thought was it. very interesting because we learned that, I'm going to read this from my cheat sheet. They were directed to a series of Ford C-Max hybrid vehicles with the clue that instructed them to drive to Malmo, Sweden. They were asked to drive conservatively. And if they ended up using less than 0.10 US gallons yeah. of gasoline upon arrival, they were given their next clue. Yeah. So they really had to be strategic, mm-hmm. I guess. Yes conservative yeah with their vehicle and some teams just didn't really take that into consideration it seemed like well i think that some of them teams just didn't consider it but then some teams like jim and uh, misty they just decided let's just get there let's just get there and take the penalties i mean i think some teams blew it off just for the strategy of Mm -hmm. saying you know what screw the fuel mileage i just want to get there fast right and we'll try to solve the clue yeah. You can go either way. But Jim and Missy weren't the only team that struggled with driving conservatively because we also saw Brooke and Robbie mm-hmm. and Tim and TJ kind of fall along the wayside, mm-hmm. including um, Adam and Bethany. Adam and Bethany. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how would you have done? Like, would, do you know how to conserve fuel? No. no. I wouldn't really have known. I, I think wouldn't... I would have been so into the race that it wouldn't have crossed my I mind. I mean, the like... only thing that I know is just if you, you know, consider, like, always accelerate – that wastes more mm-hmm. gas, so like you know, the more miles. I would get have to the used. Gallon. Some teams used less than 0.1 as amount of gas. I would have used like ten gallons. Yeah, I am the worst driver. Me just too. Accelerating, braking, accelerating, braking. If you could make it through my car ride, it's amazing. Right. 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 So I would have failed. Well, the teams that didn't drive conservatively and didn't use, oh, that did use mm-hmm. more than a tenth of a gallon, they had to answer geography questions that were given to them by a student, which was naming capital cities of the Scandinavian countries of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Yeah. How do you guys think you would have done in that situation? I, I think a lot of people used, like Jim and Misty went up, out of their way to ask people with smartphones to kind of look it up, but it seemed like Tim and TJ just knew right off the bat oh my God, the TJ country, the it was like it was like he was like meant for this episode mm-hmm. he knew those capitals like it was nobody's business <laughs> I loved it he was so confident too he's like oh yeah you know whatever I don't even know I would have definitely gone and asked for help just to like make sure that my answer was correct for sure although I wish it would have been a little more challenging from the standpoint of looking yeah. back now I think I would have also driven very quickly and said screw you know, saving fuel because you could find someone right there as a busy square mm-hmm. and you could easily just find someone with a phone uh-huh. and then boom, you have your answer. one minute. Like, right. I think I would have driven fast because it didn't seem like a challenge at all, in right. my opinion. Yeah, and I feel like if, if we're a race for a million dollars, maybe the stakes should have been a little bit higher in this That's what I think, little but, scenario. Yeah. But, yeah. I well, 
we saw the teams get their next clue after they drove conservatively, mm-hmm. which ultimately led them back to Copenhagen. And they had to do their detour. I love how they just went right back. <laughs> I, at first, I was a little confused because rather than saying that they had to go back, it jumped to Phil talking about Copenhagen is the city of whatever. And I'm thinking, wait, they're not even in. They're not even Copenhagen. They're in Sweden now. And then all of a sudden, it jumped back to you. All right, now we have to go back to Denmark. Yeah. Like, okay. I wish they would have switched the two around because <laughs> at first I was like. Obviously, production just messed up with editing because I was really confused. But yeah. I don't know. That was just my my mind. <laughs> so it was just like all about the product placement with the car for 100%. sure. It's like let's just drive to Sweden, you know, yeah. conserve fuel, even though they just drove there and then drove right back. <laughs> but whatever. This detour was called parking space versus wedding cake. So before we really saw everything play out, which one would you guys have chosen? Um, I definitely would have gone to Streetscape because I feel like I can, I like detail. I can follow detail. The parking spot one? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anything when it goes to cooking, I'm out. So, I mean, I guess things were kind of already baked. I didn't know this. Yeah. Right. No, I would have gone to Streetscape. I I mean, sorry, parking, but I feel like I would have done okay. I think so. Uh Uh-huh. I would have definitely picked the parking space as well because A, biking. I'm good at, you know, spin class, but biking on like real roads. That's not a real biking, Jessica. (laughs) Okay. Hey, soul cycle's tough. Anyway. Placement. (laughs) Drink. (laughs) Anyways, I would have definitely done the parking space because I'm pretty good at detail and I like that stuff, so. I think I definitely would have picked parking space as well. Um, just because of the detail stuff yeah. too and uh, yeah. you're more in control mm-hmm. of this situation where i feel like wedding cake you know you might have bike problems or cake you saw the cake kind of right self-destruct every now and then so i definitely want to pick parking space in parking space teams had to travel to set up a parklet teams only had 30 minutes to set it up in the parking space and if it was exactly as the photograph guides were set up the um, judge would give them their next clue if they were incorrect, they could use up the remaining time to make corrections. But once the 30 minutes were up, they had to move over to a new parking space and completely start over. In Wedding Cakes, teams traveled and to where they had to put together a traditional wedding cake known as a kronskagaji, mm-hmm. whatever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with all the necessary tears and tiny Danish flags. They then had to transport the cake across the town to the Allegade 10 restaurant. If the cake was correct, they would uh, then been approved for the delivery and sign the team's receipt, and they would get their next clue. Correct. <laughs> and again, kind of like we've seen this whole episode, it was pretty split, which the yeah. teams did. It wasn't more like one team, more right. teams at this versus the other. So let's talk about the parking space detour first, because this is, I feel like, we saw a little bit more struggle than the other detour. Mm-hmm. Um, Jim and Misty... Um, obviously chose this detour because in their professions of being dentists, they were really, they take pride in paying close attention to detail, which ultimately kicked them in the butt. Yeah. 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 Which I thought was funny because the way it was edited, I can, I feel like they probably were like, Jim, can you stand here and tell us what you're feeling? Oh my God. Just so they could get that flower pot in that shot. I thought the exact same thing. And both of them were like, I just, I can't see what we're missing. And the flower pot was like directly right there. (laughs) Great editing. So good. Well done. (laughs) And of course, because they didn't have the eight pedals showing, it was only seven that they weren't given their clue right away. And I think that's when we kind of saw a little bit of frustration set in for Jim. Um, Shelly and Nisi also struggled a little bit. Tim and TJ and Adam and Bethany, I feel, were more on top of the detail because they both Mm -hmm. were so quick to be like, oh, wait, the pedals, there's Uh seven, but we really need to have eight showing. But this was one of the first challenges of the entire season that we've seen some of the strongest teams really show stress and frustration. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Not only, of course, the dentist, but also I really think for the first time we saw Adam and Bethany really get frustrated and sweated out. That's true. Because once they got to the parking, of course, because they did the baking first, but they gave up. Because remember when Tim and TJ came, well, and, and I like, think... they were like, oh, hey, guys. And they're like, can't talk to you. Yeah. And like, it got really scary. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, once again, ha- her not having two arms, I think the other challenge would have been very 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 difficult because she couldn't have she tried um biking biking and that would have been extremely hard having yeah. one arm and then it, she couldn't have really held it you know with mm-hmm. one arm yeah. so i think it was very smart that they did switch right after they figured yeah. out that it would yeah. have been hard and then they just really focused on you know that paying attention to detail yeah agreed 
And then we saw in the wedding cake detour. I mean, it was a no-brainer that Kim and Allie were going to choose this because they're cyclists. Oh, yeah. Which was funny to see them on this kind of bike because it looked like there was a little bit of struggle at the yeah. beginning. But when they arrived there, you know, the the guy in the kitchen was just like, all you have to do is stack the remaining pieces on the cake. It was a lot easier, the cake portion. Yeah. I thought they were going to have to really bake I a wedding too. cake or at least put the frosting on and decorate it a certain way mm -hmm. that they do in Denmark. I don't know. Yeah. 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 It just seemed a little, that cake part was a little easier than I had, I guess, expected. But Kim and Allie were so smart to A, bring an icing along with them. I love that how they just... Them. It saved them. And then taking the top part and just, you know, having two pieces and then assembling it. Mm -hmm. because Once you got there. Right. Because it was so tall. It would have been so much easier just to have two shorter ones. So they, once again, they're just, they're, they stepped up their game big time. Completely. And that also goes back to, I think that anyone that participates in the show that's not a racer, I think they must be told, do not offer any kind of assistance as far as like going on the internet because no other team thought to ask. Can I bring the ice skiing? But they never offered it as well. They have, right. you know, you have to wait to ask. But the fact that they asked that saved them so much. Oh, yeah. Everyone's cake fell apart. Everyone's. Everybody's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you said, Kim and Allie really did step it up this episode. And they were so consistent. But we saw when they got to drop off their cake, they didn't have their receipt. And that's when I was like, oh, oh shoot. Like, me this too. is such a crucial part of this task that if you don't have your receipt, that could really cost you a lot of time. Yeah. But they were so lucky. And again, this we talked about this on one of our other, other after shows, that luck is a huge part of this race. Yeah. And so I think they got super lucky with retracing their steps and finding it on the street. They got very lucky, yeah. Yeah. So, so nice job. And I, and I was, I, when I honestly, when he, she was like, wait, what's that piece of paper? I was so happy that it was there because I was rooting for them the entire time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the amazing race, though, where it's, you know, half strategy and good attitude that half total luck. luck. I mean, yeah. come on. That was lucky. Yeah. Keith and Whitney also did the wedding cake roadblock and we uh, detour and we heard them because it's like, oh, we're getting married soon. So we should do the wedding cake uh -huh. detour. <laughs> Brooke and Robbie and Keith and Whit. Oh, I have Keith and Whitney written down on two, uh, twice, but I guess it was Amy and Maya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else about the detour that stuck out to you guys in your notes? Um, you know what? I was really, this goes to show whenever the wrestlers have something to do with actual strength. Mm -hmm. They do really, really well. That, right. Because they were the only team that were able to just to hold their cake because they didn't put it on the bike with all the bumps. Right. She held that cake the entire time. And that just really showed when it comes to a physical challenge, they are a team to be reckoned yeah. with. Yeah. Because they did a really, really good job. And we've been saying that her attitude brings them down and she gives up too quickly. This was the first episode yeah. where she didn't crumble, she didn't give up. And we'll get to it later, but it worked out well for them. But once again, they didn't, it's, she only really crumbles when she has this fear that they're going to be in last place. Yeah, right. And so she good. never had that fear. And I was just so happy that they picked this, cha this um, challenge because clearly they're not that great with detail. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that they chose this and it was a lot more physical, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that cake was probably about what, 20 pounds, the tray? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I don't know if 20, maybe. It was a lot. Anyways, but lot. still, that's like, I can barely even like hold my arms out just normally like this. For a long time. We don't know how long they were biking either. It could yeah. have been a few blocks. I mean, you never know. She will, although if, she, if, we, if we really want to embarrass her, I'm just saying we should freeze frame the TV when they were doing the and camera. And she's like this. Her eyes were rolling in the back yes. of her mind. Oh, her head. I know. They're just the, the craziest face I've ever <laughs> seen. It was so good. Look out, girl. I'm going to freeze frame that and tweet it to you. So do not hate me. It's oh, happening. and I have to give happening. a shout out for, I think it was Kim or maybe Ali for asking to grab one of those donuts or those like bakery things because they oh, looked yes. so when you good. Oh, and I, no. I was like, girl, I would have totally grabbed one too. And I loved how, I think it was Robbie was like, hey, can I um, eat the cake now that we delivered it? No. <laughs> no. <Yeah>. no. <laughs> Another thing that really stuck out to me in this detour, which is something <clears throat> I think we definitely need to talk about because I think they lost momentum was Jim and Misty. They ended up switching detours. Yeah. They couldn't handle the, the park lad thing. Mm -hmm. So they ended up going back to the the wedding cake which you know, there was a lot of people who switched this episode but the other way yeah 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 so because there was three teams the dentist switched the surfers mm -hmm. switched and um keith and the nashville couple t switched right keith and whitney they went yep. back to the park lot so keith and whitney actually started out doing the cake and then they right. switched to parking right. right yeah 
but they were the but the dentists were the only teams that went from the parking to, to the wedding cake, which surprised me because when the teams arrived to do parking, they all would say, "Oh my gosh, thank goodness we switched." Oh my god, that should have been an indication to Jim and Misty to just stay because they made the right decision by going to parking as far as difficulty goes. I'm yeah. surprised they switched. Yeah, but I think that they nailed the cake one in one take, right? They didn't drop the cake. They yeah. delivered it right away. So yeah, they got it. I'm just surprised they did it. I mean, now I'm now it kind of makes me nervous if if he ever does surgery on my teeth. And just this was just the first <laughs> just time. Kidding. Whether whether they should have switched or not, it was just the first time that you saw them questioning. Yeah, the entire season it is we're doing this. This is the right way, and it works out for them. So it's nice to see they're human too. Exactly, right. and that's another. We always mention this about how this is what. We, I love most about Amazing Race is that you can never be too confident in this mm-hmm. race because it can kick you in the butt because you can never master Amazing Race. Right. Half of it's luck. Yep. So you just, you got to just head in the game, let the ego out the door. Yep. Before we dive into the second part of this episode, okay. I just want to make sure our fans know to rate, comment, and subscribe because I feel like we've been pretty consistent with our views and everyone's still commenting on our YouTube, which is great because we love to hear the feedback. It's been on yes. Point. And Allie is so great with Twitter because oh I gosh. I woke up this morning and I had like 20 tweets from her <laughs> about what she thought about this episode. And I definitely appreciate how proactive she is to mm-hmm. reach out to us and let her know her two cents on The Amazing Race. That's great. Yes. So. But we still haven't gotten to 10,000 views. And I know. If you guys want us to wear ridiculous stuff in the studio, then you guys need to step it up a little bit and well, share with all your friends. And let's see here. Let's just specify the rules on uh, <laughs> what, about our views on YouTube. Okay. Because right? some people have been commenting about like what we're going to wear. Is it where by the time our next episode for After Buzz airs, if it does not reach 10,000 views, we're safe? Or if at any time during the season it reaches 10,000 views, we have to wear something? Only reason why I ask is because I've been looking at our previous After Buzz YouTube episodes, mm-hmm. and they're still continually climbing. Oh. So our first episode is now at almost 16,000 wow. views. Wow! Our second episode is now getting pretty high. They're still going, so I want to know, is it just if they reach at 10,000 at any point, or it has to reach 10,000 by the time we do the next week's episode? I think you just want to wear underwear on your head. Yeah. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Who's someone wearing underwear on her? That was one that of the was suggestions. One of the oh, well, then definitely <laughs> does not reach 10,000 views by the next After Buzz episode. We don't have to do that. I did not know that was on the table. <laughs> Guys, I think it would be important for us to read um, Allie's. I feel like she's like our yes. fan correspondent too, you know? It. So uh, Allie thought that Kim and Allie did a great job this leg and also Brooke and Robbie. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to know um, that she liked the detours, but what did we really think of them overall? Oh, uh, the, detours this ep- the detours this episode. What did you guys think? You know what? I really liked it. I feel like they did a great job of, pic- of uh, picking physical versus detail. Yeah. You know? And sometimes the detours are too similar, and sometimes one's way faster than the other. And I feel like this detour, finally, the timing of it seems similar, the difficulty seems similar, but just on different scopes. So mm-hmm. I liked it. What does Allie think? Um, Ali said she loved I'm reading because there's so many of them Um, she definitely loved the detour this episode another thing she said did we catch on to the fact that Bethany said to the dentist oh they are just going to be giving up on this one but she goes do you think that was a little hypocritical because they changed from the wedding cake detour to the parking space one maybe a little bit I just think that a lot of the teams may be honing in on the fact that the dentist are like on fire yeah so i think that any opportunity they can be like oh look at that team was always right right Maybe you're gonna switch you yeah know, so I, I guess i don't really blame them for saying that Allie would have done the wedding cake challenge but she said she thinks she would have changed to the parking space one do you guys think i mean of course everyone's different with how they would play the amazing race do you think you would have changed detours or would you have just stuck it out with one i mean i think that i would always I'm never one to like not like that you're really giving up but I'm never really one to give up so I think I would do anything I everything I could to complete the challenge that I picked however that biking seemed pretty hard and if I didn't think of um sp- splitting the cake but no I think I probably would have stick stick to one yeah. yeah I think it definitely depends too with who I'm racing with like no offense, I love the two of you, but if I'd be racing with you guys, <laughs> I'd be giving up in a heartbeat. Yeah. Because it just shows that we need a lot of strength. And, and... I know that we try to stay in shape, but it's not like we're the strongest <laughs> yeah, individuals. No. So if it's the three of us, 
hell, I'm switching, right. I am switching fast. Yeah, and that's another, I actually, going back to Ali's question, I really did like these challenges because I always love when you really have to work with your partner. And the biking mm -hmm. thing, it was a really, it was a partner yeah. thing. And I just, you see how well people communicate together and work together with your teammate. Mm -hmm. So I always love those ones where you really have to rely on your other team member. Yeah, agreed. So Ali, thank you for those questions. Yes, thank Still you. Enough. She has more, but you know, they're more geared around the roadblocks. I think we should just dive right into let's the roadblock. Let's get into that. Yeah. So let's talk about this roadblock and who did it and how it was overall. What did you guys oh, think of this roadblock? I loved this roadblock. However, it would have been so hard for me. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember if, if someone even tells me like a phone number, like right off the bat, I can't even barely even remember to put it in my phone in right. So I would have not been very, this would have been very hard for me. Yeah, and once again, love you. Thank God we're not teammates. Cause I too am <laughs> terrible at memorization. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. But can I just say though, Hoover was the woman that was doing the judging. I want to be her friend. She seems she so seems funny. So funny. Yeah. Oh, I know. She's kind of stern, but then once you got it, she was like, yay! Yay! <laughs> I wonder if she is Ida Davidson. I hope so. I wonder if she she is. Is. I'm sure she is. Ida, yeah. you're just the coolest. And those oh, sandwiches yeah. looked bomb. They did. Go, oh. Ida. But... You know what, Ida? Just because we all we were talking about how great she is. Remember, <laughs> I think it was Jason and Amy season. Remember they had to go through the hotel room. Oh, but it was oh, All Stars. They had to go through yes. that hotel room, and that that maid was just like super <laughs> fun. Yes, that was so funny. <laughs> Sorry, nuns. Wait, really so fast. Random. Just going back, I think I said that uh, Jim and Misty made it through the cake detour with one shot and you know what I just remember they dropped their flag they dropped, they dropped their flag so they did so it did take them twice so both challenges they still struggled yeah. wah wah hmm. of our confidence and the amazing race you know yeah so we saw Kim, Robbie, Whitney, Maya TJ, Adam, Misty and Nisi do this roadblock Allie thinks that Robbie did a great job and I would have to say I he impressed me he impressed me and do you know what made it Oh, you said Rob, right? Yeah. Yeah. And well, also what's fun is he kind of reminds me of the Afghanimals from two seasons ago, and I guess last season, where they showed you that you can still do the race with a little bit of humor. Yeah. And Rob presenting his answers to, we're going to call her Ida, um, <laughs> he was so funny about it. It was like he was really delivering as a true server, or as he called, a waitress. Right. And uh, I thought he did a great job. Mm-hmm. And I know, I loved how he's like, I'm going to be, I was the best waitress. And he's like, yeah. wait, um, I'm not wait. a waitress. But I he did it with a sense of humor. Yeah. And it worked out for him. He didn't get too stressed, unlike some other people. I, I, I mean, watching that roadblock, I definitely made me want a sandwich. I don't know about you guys. I know. Those sandwiches looked so good. Although some seemed like it had weird toppings that I would <laughs> never consider putting together. But I mean, it's obviously got to be amazing if... So do you think After there. Buzz will pay for us to go all the way over there to get a sandwich next week? I don't know, mm. Phil. What do you think? Can we do that, Phil? Thanks. Appreciate it. We're gonna go to <laughs> we're gonna go to Copenhagen next week on After Buzz. And go visit like Ida. A good fundraiser. Oh. <laughs> we should have a GoFundMe link. <laughs> if a guy can get tens of thousands of dollars for making potato salad on 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 uh, oh, Kickstarter, I saw that. you guys yeah. can go to Copenhagen. That's so true. Well, maybe yeah. we'll start a GoFundMe thing and we'll we'll, we'll, we'll take After Buzz to Denmark. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do a quick we'll do a little uh, recap from Denmark with Ida. Yes. And then we'll come all the way back. Exactly. I love that idea. I love it. If I'm we in. do not reach $10,000, Phil will just sponsor the rest of the funds. Right? So thanks, Phil, our <laughs> producer. Moving on quickly. In this roadblock, Misty struggled quite a bit. But I will say, I know a lot of people hate on Jim and Misty, and I'm still not entirely sure as to why. Overconfidence is not, to me, a quality that gives you a right to hate on a team. They're not villains. They're not going out of their way to screw anyone over. I think that they're just really confident in their abilities, which they learned this episode, and I think you know, they're now going to take a step back. But I, I you got to support their relationship because Jim yeah. was behind Misty 100%, not only in last week's episode mm -hmm. with the pony thing and walking up the hill, he encouraged her. And then same with this week when she struggled in the roadblock, he was there 100%. And she even said, you know, knowing that he wasn't giving up on me really helped me get through that roadblock. And I 100% so, I agree. I think that having a solid um, relationship with your teammate, it, it can help you get through this race. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Jim was there every second, never got mad at her, was supportive every second. I loved how she was singing the recipes. She oh, was yeah. Like, almost like a rap. <laughs> yeah. Like, hold her hands. Dun, 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 dun. And, and thin anchovies and some onions on top. <laughs> <laughs> whatever works, it. girl. Whatever works. 
It, see, it also seemed like Whitney got a little annoyed with Maya in this, oh, in yeah. this roadblock because Maya was really speaking out loud. Uh-huh. And I think, I mean, I don't think Maya was using that for strategy, but I feel like if I was going to be in this kind of roadblock with concentration, I would try to, you know, I, I know what I'm capable of when it comes to memorizing mm-hmm. things and speaking out loud helps me, but I would probably overdo it just to confuse people. I don't know about you guys. Oh, yeah. geez. Why not use that as a, a tactic? villain over here. <laughs> I think it's a good strategy. I mean, I do. I do. <laughs> But no, I think I would have said it out loud just to help me remember and mm-hmm. kind of not even like in my head, I would be like, oh, you know, I'm, I would probably wouldn't even have thought that I'm messing up someone else. Right. So this That's roadblock, so sweet. sweet old Ida, send us some sandwiches. We'd love some. Yeah. And um, I love how when Kim finally got it right after her second try, she like gave everyone kisses and was like yeah. so excited. Well, I also just wanted to dine at this restaurant because everyone there was the nicest patron yeah. ever, right? Every time I got it right, like standing ovation from I the know. restaurant. I was like, oh, I love you people. And you know, but poor Misty, because the thing is, is that she got the hardest part right from the beginning. She got mm-hmm. all the ingredients right every time. The only thing which she was missing was the number. Was the sandwich numbers, and she knew them because mm-hmm. once she realized she was missing the number, she was like, "Oh yeah, one thirty-eight, fifty-six, seventy-two, or whatever it was." And so it was almost just once again the amazing race. It's the tiny details because Misty actually was really good at this challenge. Yeah, she just missed that last piece of information. Yeah. Right. And Ida was just not going to budge in. Like, after her sixth try mm-hmm. of just only missing the number, I think if I was Ida, I would have been like, numbers. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> so tough. <gasps> numbers. Numbers. TJ killed it in this. And as oh. we learned, he's a server. So, of course, mm-hmm. naturally, it just came to him and he rocked Do we was know a rock he's star. a server at? I don't. I should have I asked him. Go, we I know. Say, we, we should, should like, go stalk him. Oh, for all our fans at home, um, I hung out with TJ on oh, Friday yeah. night. I met TJ and Dennis from Dennis uh, and Isabel. What? Dennis and TJ are such great guys, both on the show and off the show. And I'm trying to get friends? Dennis. They are, yeah. Really? And I'm trying to get Dennis to come in here because I feel like we didn't really get to know Dennis and Isabel on the show because okay. of two episodes. Yeah. That it would be nice to have them in here and hear about their experience and what we didn't learn about their relationship right. that they would have liked to us for us yeah, to have Yeah, Dennis, come on in. We'd love it. And that would be really fun because, you know, and I'll even say sometimes I get it wrong until I talk with them in person. Exactly. Right. A great example is our our ice cream girls. I oh could God, not yes. handle them. And we brought them into the Afterbus <laughs> studio and I loved them. Now, so I would love to have them in here Yeah. because maybe, like I said, I don't think I was the... On their team right away. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it happens. But now we are a team ice bunnies. Sure. Yes. Or ice bunnies. Ice queens. Ice I just queens. got the two mixed. Where's Kim, by the way? I want her I in here. I miss Kim. Freaking chicken. All right. So the roadblock, great stuff. We also saw that people struggled getting to the pit stop because of some drama. Uh-huh. Um, Shelly and Nisi being one of them, which we'll get to in a second. Kim and Allie, rock stars, first place. That My gives girls. That gives yeah. Justin yes. some pretty good points this leg. Ugh. Brooke and Robbie, second place. That... Jessica, Keith and Whitney, another team of Justins. Then Amy and Maya, another team of Justins. Tim and TJ finally puts me up on the scoreboard. (laughs) (laughs) Then Shelly and Nisi, followed by Adam and Bethany. And then in last place, Jim and Misty. But before we talk about Adam and Bethany and Jim and Misty, who have been consistent teams in the front of the pack being last, let's talk about Shelly and Nisi this episode because Mm -hmm. they are starting to fall apart. They are. We saw it kind of fall apart when they were doing the boat stuff. two episodes ago but this one they were i don't know what's going on with them and i'm i'm nervous about how they're I gonna know. do now and phil had to step in and kind of play like middleman like yeah. when he said this is where you have to be a grown-up i was yeah. like Dang. i know <laughs> I, you know i'm nervous too james and jessica because you see on the race that every team falls apart a little bit right but they bring it back together for the next leg or the next episode and you can tell because whenever they do the end of the leg interviews mm-hmm. the teams are back to liking each other and Mm -hmm. you can tell they've mended they just keep unraveling more and on this episode when they did their final thoughts of the episode they were still unable to even talk to each other it's in this face there's some real communication issues with this team and this is not just a one leg issue don't give me that don't give me that that team look there James don't you give me that it's the Nisi look don't give me that (laughs) Nisi because I'm telling you they got some issues (laughs) yeah Get it together. James. And I mean, it's very rare to see people actually argue, you know, at the pit stop. At like the when, mat. Yeah, at the mat yeah. when they just were told that they're still in the race. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's supposed to be like good news, like yeah. excited. And they were just 
bickering, still fighting. I, I just... And it, you think for super fans, they would take in that moment and be like, thank God we're still in the race. Right. Yeah. Interesting. I was disappointed with them. I really was. And this whole episode flipped. Like, it oh, was yeah. crazy. Uh-huh. Like, Complete our, reversal. Our, our um, predictions last week, just throw them out yeah, once again. Off. Because it was the teams that have been doing so well, Adam and Bethany and Misty and Jim, always the top of the pack. We said they were going to stay in the top of the pack. <clears throat> they went right to the bottom. Yeah. Teams from right to the bottom, the wrestlers, Keith and Whitney. I've been counting them out like every time. Yeah, Wait, right? really fast and though. Keith and Whitney, they did not bicker at all. Nope. nope. And so I don't know if maybe what Phil said at the very um, end of last episode, how yeah. people are saying that, you know, you guys are not very supportive. Maybe that they took that into consideration because they were fine this episode. Yep. And, you know, I, you guys know that I've been very vocal about my feelings about Jim and Misty. And I do think, <laughs> though, I do think that I'm going to see a change in Jim, and I hope so, from the episodes here on out. Because he has been so vocal about their abilities and how they are unstoppable and they're going to get first every single leg. I like that at the end of this episode, he even said, this humbles me. Yeah. And instead of him being like, we were screwed, it's not fair, he just said, you know what? We maybe came out a little strong and I'm humbled and I think that maybe this will be a turn for them as far as their attitude goes about the race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that actually, you know, going from first to last place and especially like having it a non-elimination, they still have their save, they're definitely going to lower their confidence and just be a little more in the game, I think. I agree. Do you know what would have been, though? A great twist. Hmm. Kind of like how they do on Survivor, where, you know, if you have the thing that saves you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where if you don't, if you turn it in, you have to turn it in ahead of time, <gasps> even if you don't get any votes. Oh, so what I'm saying that was, uh, Jim and Misty handed Phil before. the save pass. Ah. And I was waiting for Phil to say thank you and then put it into his pocket and then, and then like, say, this is a nominal elimination, right? Oh. To have them have to just gamble, do you think it's not elimination? Then don't. Because <sighs> I think they should have yet. It, once they turn in the safe pass, because they don't know if they're last. Right. right. They really didn't. You don't know what happened to other teams. Well, I mean, they f- figured they were and they were right, but... I think once you turn in that oh save, gosh, that would have been a they, huge. Phil gets it, and then he says, "This is not elimination." A... Oh! Justin, I've said it before. This is why you need to be a producer. Yeah, seriously, you're on fire. You need to be so hired good. by World Race Production. <laughs> oh my gosh, so that would have been a huge. Just to see their face be like, Wah! we just used our save. Yeah. Then they really would have been humbled. <laughs> yeah, then they would have been humbled. I like that they still have it though. I I think. Of course you. Do. I you know that's my team <laughs> staying. Yeah, in there. of course. <laughs> so that kind of concludes this episode. Let's just dive right into some predictions, shall we? Let's do it. I'm gonna grab my pen. And now you're after oh, Buzz God. TV predictions. Predictions. Ooh. All right. Since I'm back, I'm going to throw it to Justin first. I think because you missed last week, I should be able to throw it back to you. But once again, no, fine. You know what? They're on my team for the Fantasy League, and they are on a fire right now. They're getting along. So I think Kim and Allie, they are going to continue to stay on top. Yeah. Even if they don't get first, I think you're going to see them in the top three. Watch out for my bike and shakes. I think (laughs) that Shelly and Nisi, sadly, are on their way out. I know one of our big fans is going to dislike that a little bit. I'm sorry. Sam, happy birthday, by the way. One of our big followers. Ooh, happy birthday. But it's, yeah. it's her favorite team, and she really likes them, but their communication yeah. issues are unraveling them. They have not performed well on any leg, yet alone not communicating well. So I know that they are still not even in the bottom two, but I think that we might see them go home soon. There you go, James. How'd I do? Uh, that's great. All right. Yeah. All right. I agree with you. I think that Shelly and Nisi, you know, they, they're they going to go home if they don't rekindle. And then as far as first place, I think your cyclists yes. are going to stay up there. And I also think that my surfers are going to get back in first or second place. From okay. seventh to first, yep. huh? There might be an equalizer, that's you know? Ambitious. Of you course never know. They never do anything wrong. Every- she can't blame herself that, you know, some of the challenges are a little more difficult, but they never do anything wrong. So mm, That seems, I don't know if that's true. You seem to really be rooting for them. I am. You're, 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 
Opinions are clouded. Well, the reason why I say equalizer is because when I watched the clip for next week twice, oh. and I saw that there were more than one teams around um, Keith and Whitney and Shelly and Nisi when they had their head-to-head -head in Marrakesh. So it makes me wonder it if looks... there's an equalizer, and that means it's anyone's game of who's going to get first or last. Because Brooke and Robbie were right mm -hmm. next to them, and I yeah. believe Kim and Allie were too. And if those were people towards the front, that means the people from the back are going to be yeah. up there too. I mean, I agree. It looks aggressive. It does. Yeah. And also the double U turns back. <gasps> double so. U turn. Well, this is what I want to bring to the table because okay. we know our fantasy points. Justin, um, as Allie even tweeted, your team slayed, slayed, quote unquote, what Allie said, this leg of the race. Yeah. You are now in first place with 33 you know it. You know points. It. This should be a surprise to <laughs> no one. All right? I've picked the best team. Booyah. That's Talk a, about being a little over no, oh yeah. cocky. Yeah, a little yeah. gym is coming yeah. out of Justin. I think there's a gym side there's in Justin. There's a gym side oh, in Justin. Come on, let me bask in this for this one episode. I'm going to leave right now. That is an 11 point lead over me, who has 22. And Jess, even though you have two teams, you have 21 points. You're hanging in still there. Still in, hanging I'm still in. There. in. But 33 for team Justin. 33 now, for team Justin. If I can Justin. just bask in this for a little bit longer, I'm just saying I'm starting to recruit quite a loyal fan you base you on do. Team Justin. Everyone's YouTubers, Team Justin. YouTubers, I love you. So Sam, <laughs> once again, happy birthday. Love you even more because you're on Team Justin. Let's move on. Um, oh my gosh. Soul Brother 69 is amazing this week. I love Soul Brother. Did you read his comments? They absolutely cracked me up. He has left Team James Wallington. <laughs> left. Although he does love me. And he's come to the light. He's on Team Justin, but he's still... He's my favorite, though. He still <laughs> loves Jessica Hot Blonde. So... <laughs> I loved that. I love Justin. Finally, welcome... Thank you, Soul Brother, for being on my team. Soul Brother. Also, more shout outs for Justin's oh, team. Oh, God. Oh, I'm going to go on and on. Tom Keep King. Going. Welcome to the light, baby. Tom King's on my team. Um, Mr. Sozo, team Justin. <laughs> Should I keep going? Oh, okay, it's oh. okay. Still going, team Justin. Do we want more? Okay, John Tan, team Justin. I'm just, oh wait, here's another one. Helm Heather, <laughs> 210, team Justin. I, I'll just stop there, but the list goes on and on. You know I'm what? I'm telling you guys, this is the team to be on. Make sure that you keep commenting that you're on Team Justin. It makes my day, and the best part is it drives James I want just and one Jessica person to be on Team Jess. Hold on, keep hold on. on, Team Justin. Keep Jess, let's up. not lose some hope here because I'm going to throw a little twist into our fantasy here, and I'm going to say it's time to bring out some bonus points. Oh, okay? oh you're feeling threatened. But I'm I am bummed. feeling you're threatened. threatened. You're changing and the rules. And I think we need to have bonus points, so we need to stick to one team for first place, one team for who's going to be eliminated, and if you accurately correct, if you're accurate about your your prediction, you get a bonus point. Maybe we should make it like three bonus points. What no. Do you think? What no. Do you think, oh gosh. Only because you're behind. No. <laughs> One. <laughs> One bonus point if you predict correct either of those. And I think we should double it two points just for this episode alone because of the U-turn. Since it's a double U-turn, let's have a double bonus points. If you predict who is U-turning and then what team is going to be U-turn. You don't have to pair up who's going to oh. U-turn here. Just name two teams you okay. think are going to get the U-turn and what two teams are, are going to write be U-turn. Yes. Okay. So Jess, who do you think is getting first next week? I'm going to say... I'm going to say my surfers. Okay. I'm going to go with bikers. Stick with my girls. Hell yeah. And I am going to go with... Oh, gosh, this is really, really tough. I know. You asked the question. I am going to say... Mm, I'm going to have to say the surfers, too. Woo! Uh, and then for going home, I'm Actually, gonna say, I'm going to say Jimmy nope. and Misty. I'm saying Jimmy and Misty. What is wrong with you? Um, okay, and then Shelly and Nisi, I think I'm going to go home, James. Yeah, I'm say they're going home. Okay, Shelly and Nisi. What do you think? I'm going to say... You can do it, James. You can do it. I don't it. want to say Shelly and Nisi because they're my team, and I just want to throw someone Let's... random out there. Okay. I'm going to say... Oh, Thank my God. You. I love uh, that. Uh, <laughs> we don't have much time left on the show, James. I am going to say Shelly and Nisi. Hey. I want to say Keith and Whitney, though, just to have something different, but I'll say Shelly and Nisi. Who's getting eliminated? We already did that. Let's talk about the U-turn. What two teams are going to use the U-turn? All right, I think, here we go, I'm just going to go very quickly. I think Misty and Jim are going to nominate people, and I think that Kim and Allie are going to nominate people. Kim and Allie, okay. Mm -hmm. And they are going to U-turn um, Keith and Whitney, and they're going to do the wrestlers. 
All right. I'm just throwing out names at this yeah. point. I don't okay. really need them so much because I'm doing so well. In- <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm going to say... Um... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. This is hard. <laughs> I have no idea. I think... <clears throat> Wow, this is an exciting writing it. Okay, <laughs> you go. I don't know. I... James, you should have prepared us. Okay, there was a bonus clip I saw on YouTube of Kim and Allie discussing. Research. No, this is someone I think, I don't know who tweeted it So to you've me. read it. You already know what's going to no, happen. No, there was conversation the this episode about the U-turn. They don't know mm-hmm. what's going to happen yet, but Kim and Allie said that in the race, you don't want to make enemies. And Nisi got sassy with Kim and Allie in a bonus clip online. And Kim and Allie discussed that this will be remembered if there were to ever be a U-turn at some point. So it'll be interesting. I am going to say that Keith and Whitney get U-turned. I don't know by who. And I'm going to say that Jim and Misty U-turn someone. And I'm also going to say that... Ay, ay, ay. I told you were going to drive in your I car think, right okay, now. I think... don't, don't change the dial. Don't change the fuck. I think um, Keith and Whitney are going to U-turn someone. Okay. I think um, Jim and Misty are going to U-turn someone. Okay. And I think the wrestlers are going to get U-turned. Okay. And I think um, two teams get U-turned, right? Yeah. Um, and I think the cyclists are going to get U-turned. This is such a tough fantasy wow. draft, this is, a, this is a tough one. I'm going to say that up. Brooke and Robbie also, also get U-turned. And mm-hmm. I'm going to say that... The other people that use the U-turn are... I'm going to throw out someone random and say Tim and TJ. <laughs> they get U-turned? So that they U-turn oh. somebody. <laughs> Did you get inside information? No. I'm just kidding. I'm of just course saying, they wouldn't like, do that. Totally they're towards kidding. the bottom that I feel like they would be yeah. inclined to use the U-turn. Fair okay. Enough. We Fair have our predictions enough. locked Woo! in. All right. So let us know who you guys think now yes. that we just took forever to do that. Uh-huh. We, that concludes our after show. <laughs> Justin, where can they find you on social media? Uh, everyone, please interact with me on all social media platforms at Justin J, just the one letter J, and then Nichols, N-I-C-H-O-L-S. And you can find me at DressJessXO. And you can find me on Twitter at James Wallington and on Instagram at Mr. James Wally. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Yes. And have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday night. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. From Hopefully. executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 